very good afternoon, Your Excellences, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The movement to end energy poverty by 2030 continues with this panel on natural gas that has emerged as a critical driver of sustainable development across African continent, offering each and every one of us opportunities for economic growth, energy security, and indeed social development. The theme of this panel is nat natural gas and the African sustainable development assessing Russian contributions. And to take us on a very short journey by way of a presentation as to how Gazprom expert is advancing the use of natural gas in developing Africa. I'd like to welcome now from Gazprom expert, the CEO, Dimitri Kandoga. I'll please put your hands together and welcome Dimitri. And to join Dimitri to have this conversation is the man who needs not too much introduction. Please let's welcome the man who has been taking Africa to everyone who needs to invest in Africa, NJ Ayuk, Chairman, Energy Chamber. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Let me first express my sincere gratitude to African Energy Chamber and its leader, NJ Ayuk, for the opportunity to speak here today. I would like to share my views on the role of natural gas in sustainable development of African economies. I will also share with you the experience of Gazprom that could be useful to Africa. First of all, I would like to stress the special position of Russia and Gazprom in today's discussion. Gazprom is a virtually integrated energy company. It does not only produce and process natural gas, but also transports stores and markets. We also sell gas condensate oil products uh, with high additional value, produce gas as motor fuel, as well as generate electricity and heat. Gazprom holds the world's largest gas reserves and is number one in gas production. The company's gas transition system is the largest in the world. Gazprom prioritizes usage of natural gas for internal market. And at the same time, we gain profit from experts. I would like to stress that Gazprom is not interested in pumping resources out of Africa. We are ready to share our experience and solutions for effective use of natural gas. Russia has secure, efficient, an independent energy system. Our customers have direct access to natural gas and clean and affordable fuel for many decades to come. Due to vast exploration program, Gazprom is constantly replenishing and developing its resource base. During its 30 years history, Gazprom added more than 13 trillion of cubic meters of, to the resource base, discovered more than 90 new fields. That's why we approach potential partners in Africa primarily as a provider of expertise, technologies, and innovations. These can help African countries to develop their energy system relying on available natural gas resources and tackling energy poverty issue in a sustainable way. These steps will definitely lead to improvement of the life quality of local citizens and solve many environmental problems. Today, the situation on African energy markets looks puzzling for us. You possess colossal resources of natural gas, but internal consumers in many countries of the continent are the last one to benefit from it. There is no other place in the world today where the use of gas and efficient and clean fuel would open such a wide range of opportunities for long-term growth. So far, lacking gas infrastructure and low solvency in African countries may gas flow to the places where better market conditions are. The flows head to export, not to internal markets. Internal gas consumption here is lagging behind the growth of its production. The share of gas that remains in Africa for use in power generation, industry, or household consumption is dramatically low. Such a scheme 
provides kind of a hit and run strategy. There are immediate income flows, but it restrains economic development by limiting available energy. It cements energy poverty, leads to blackouts and unstable industry outputs. As a result, social and economic development lags us substantially behind leading global economies. And this situation further damages the position of African countries in global competition for access to resources. What is more, along with the growth of population, the energy demand in Africa is projected to more than double by 2050. We are convinced that many countries on the African continent are able to make a breakthrough in their economic development. The abundance of energy resources should be the starting point for this leap. Still, there should be proper market regulation which can secure stable profits for energy companies as well as create necessary conditions for economic and social development of African countries. I would like to stress that meeting the demand of Russian Federation's internal market has always been and will always be the unconditional priority for Gazprom as a, also a national company. Let me tell you how these issues have been solved in Russia. Gazprom is a company that by law is granted a monopoly right to export pipeline gas. Along with this, the company was tasked with extensive social obligations to expand gas infrastructure and to supply gas to households at a price secured from global price volatility. From the very beginning of the company has always secured stable and affordable prices on the Russian internal market, which served an important factor for the development of the whole Russian economy, including production of high-tech and energy-intensive products with additional value, creation of the world's largest gas processing and gas chemical plants. It has also helped to increase the use of gas as a motor fuel. As a result, export incas serves our people, both through tax revenues as well as through creation of infrastructure and life quality improvement. For sure, this is the only possible solution. And there are not all necessary steps that the government might need to take. What I would like to stress is that the government is always able to create conditions for a fair trade and better gas infrastructure investment to secure marketplace from volatility. A government is able to let natural gas fully explore its potential for development local economy as well as for trading and getting profits. Over half of natural gas produced in Russia comes to the internal market. Since our priorities are developed of internal, development of internal demand and corresponding infrastructure, we are fully convinced that people and economy of gas producing country should be the first one to benefit from such available, available resource. What could a wide use of gas bring to nations of Africa? Gas can bring economic and environmental benefits and can solve a number of social and humanitarian issues. Recently, one of my African counterparts told me that he had a stark choice when he was a child. He could spend wood, primary energy source, either doing his homework or for cooking. As for me, now in 21st century, kids shouldn't choose between education and food especially if we mean countries that possesses enough gas to provide much more fuel than just for cooking and power generation. Social problems are not the only one to be solved by African countries. Today, all the world have joined a real climate race with their ambitious appeal and regulatory over restrictions. At the same time, some Western countries require the same activity on climate track from the developing countries, while not admitting and compensating their own share of the historical accumulated emission. That's exactly what about Dr. Farouk Ibrahim, a poor Secretary General, told us at uh, his opening remarks, remarks of this conference. Nevertheless, air quality became a serious problem in a number of African cities today. Take Cairo, Abuja, Khartoum, even Johannesburg. According to the UN statistics, air pollution is the second mortality factor in Africa. And this problem will only worsen 
because of the growing population of Africa, because, because of high speed of urbanization in Africa, if necessary steps are not taken right now. Natural gas can become an effective solution. However, many international majors are keen to tell the African partners how to make a qualitative leap and switch to the renewables at once. I should mention that renewables are complicated, pretty expensive, and are not always fitting local specifics. First of all, they should not solve the problem, they would not solve the problem with blackouts, but would only make it worse due to their volatility. Here in South Africa, according to open sources, the security of power supply has decreased dramatically over the recent years. This happened, among other factors, due to the specific development of renewable power generation capacities. Another issue is that Africa possesses giant resources, including rare earth metals like copper, much lithium, much demanded by renewables industry. But there are no corresponding technologies available in African economy right now and right here. But gas has these technologies. That means that development of renewables is potentially just the same resource trap for African countries like gas export. The majors should prefer to recover resources in Africa and use them to produce renewable generation capacity for the premium markets. They, should not share, they, they would not share technologies or develop renewable generation here locally. Instead, they would prefer to sell their products back to Africa at a much higher price. The imperative put forward by the West is renewables is the only bright future. The energy mix may and should vary among the countries, tailored by using their resource base and, of course, by their economic needs. There is one more point to add, but not often mentioned with renewables. The point is that manufacturing and utilization of renewable generation equipment is also related to high emissions. Take into account the whole value chain, it has a significant carbon footprint. Renewable energy is volatile and need backups. Despite all that wild race for green energy, no one man major energy system in the world has managed to work on renewables only. No matter how much money was pumped into windmill and solar panels, huge reserve capacities are still needed, as well as flexible generation to mitigate volatility and cover peak consumption. Our experience tells us that it's natural gas that is most flexible, cost-efficient, and clean partner for renewables. It provides stable energy supply. Generally, when we speak about providing energy to wide range consumers, they could be the only and complex solution, in no way based exclusively on renewables energy. We can take Russian example that building enough generation capacity built uh, based on nuclear and, of course, natural gas, backed by the production and local production of natural gas, can be the basis for development of existing industries and establishing the new industrial sectors. Stable economic growth inevitably leads to higher energy consumption. The task is to choose the growth model that provides maximum result and minimum environmental impact at a given capital expenditures. In most cases, gas is the solution. It is efficient for power generation, where it can replace coal. It is efficient in gas as a motor fuel, where it replaces oil products. And it is efficient of household, replacing biomass or wood, which account as of now up to 45% in African energy balance. Gas is also a resource for conversion into a whole range of chemical products demanded by many industries. Gas industry provides econo economies with a range of hydrocarbon fuels, as well as helium, hydrogen, ammonia, polymers, and many other goods. I should also mention a multifaceted role of gas in meeting food security problem. Gas is a basic feed in production of fertilizers, which help boost crop productivity. At the same time, gas power generation plants contrasting to renewable generation require far less land use. They do not bite into planted areas of forest. I would also like to mention the use of gas as a motor fuel 
gas for transport is cost-efficient, clean, and most importantly, flexible fuel. It can, bring, it can be applied for light and heavy-duty vehicles, for buses and trucks, even for mining vehicles and railroad locomotives. In Russia, as we call it, the northern capital in St. Petersburg, uh, we opt for more than 2,500 uh, CNG-run buses to solve the pollution problem of uh, big cities. Russia is the country of great distances, and we always fully enjoy the benefits of this fuel. We see that Africa is also ready to use gas, a more efficient motor fuel than diesel or gasoline. Gazprom Group companies have wide exp expertise in the industry along the whole chain, from exploration, production, through transport and processing up to the use of gas as a motor fuel. We know how to develop and produce specialized equipment for fuel production, how to build fuel infrastructure, and how to manufacture transport running on gas. We are already discussing cooperation opportunities here in Africa and meet high interest in that sphere. Dear colleagues, here on Africa continent we see huge potential for economic growth supported by growing population. At the same time, this is a challenge that could be met with a secure, stable and independent energy system. Natural gas can build a basis for it. We know how to let explore, how to let gas explore its full potential and we are ready to share our expertise and solutions with colleagues in Africa in order to provide energy security of the countries on this continent. Thank you for your attention. I hope my mic is working. Um, Dimitri, you, I think you probably used a very good Russian trick to run out of time. And, uh, but I will go ahead to ask just one or two big questions. The International Energy Agency out of uh, Paris published a report where gas demand in Europe is going to reduce tremendously by 2030. And they are a little bit bearish on gas. Why, in your presentations, are you bullish on gas demand um, across the world on, on the role of gas as we drive up towards uh, a transition and also towards uh, development, not just in Africa, but other places? Is it working? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Njay. It's an interesting question indeed, but... Uh Answering this question, I should have another question. Where the gas consumption is reducing? The United States has a consecutive, almost consecutive 15 years of increasing gas consumption. If we take from 2010 till 2020, only except one year, they had a growing consumption of natural gas. And in 2022, when European market and Asian market was a record high prices average on year, United States has a record consumption of natural gas. If we talk about Europe, yes, indeed, uh, due to some factors, their gas consumption will uh, decrease. But uh, according to other agencies, for example, uh, gas um, exporting um, uh, countries forum, we anticipate gas consumption in Africa by 2050 to more than double. We expect significant roles, um, significant um, increase of gas consumption in Asia re region, in uh, Latin America. So we believe in gas, and uh, the numbers of statistics um, shows that that's the right thing to believe. The economies vote for gas. The economies, especially with the countries and continents like African one, with a huge gas resource, vote for gas. And second answer, well, not answer, the first one is one's answer, but, but the answer is that gas has the technology ready to solve all the issues on the agenda. Again, uh, energy poverty, stability, uh, cost efficiency, all the technologies in any sphere of industry is ready for gas industry. 
I would like to ask you a lot of questions, but I'll just make this my last question. Um, we've seen throughout Africa a lot of gas projects, whether it is ENI in launching gas projects in the Congo, we've seen in Mozambique, we've seen uh, an LNG project, we've seen um, floating LNGs. And I think for many in this room and people watching outside, the big question to Gazprom is, when are we going to see a massive gas project in Africa by Gazprom or something? Because most people will say, yes, you give a great discussion, great speech, and great synopsis on what gas is, but let's get to some deals. Let's get to a project. When are we going to see a project? Well, hopefully very soon. What, what we did, we started from the very end, not from the very beginning. So we went to the ground itself. I mean, uh, we are now um, discussing with a number of African partners projects in uh, gas as a mortal, mortal fuel. And I hope in the, let's say, coming months maybe, uh, we will see some news here. When you say very soon, are you saying this year or mid next year there's going to be a gas project announced? Let's not guess. Let's just wait. <laughs> but I hope it will be quite soon because we see huge potential and we see huge interest uh, directly from the end users, from uh, logistics companies, from uh, uh, distribution companies to um, develop this sector. Dimitri, I would love to have to ask a lot more questions, but I can. You took all the time. I've got 35 seconds. I would just like to thank you for answering this few, but uh, hopefully in the future we'll have longer conversations about gas because there's another panel coming up. So we thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much for making a case for gas in Africa. Thank you.